I did it. I got caught up on Yu-Gi-Oh! Go Rush. Can you all hear my enthusiasm to talk about this goddamn show? Yay, I, I feel it too. I feel the love. I feel the Konami love. So, yeah, I'm here to get caught up on Yu-Gi-Oh! Go Rush. Granted, 113 is not subbed as of yet. I don't know why. Um, but it looks like 113 is the start of some plot shit. So maybe we'll just talk about that when we eventually talk about this show's plot. If one ever decides to show up, uh, we will take it from there. Let's, let's start with that, shall we? Because like this arc has a strong starting point in as much as there is a starting point. And so the starting point to this arc is that Yuamu went missing after they sent Yuga back. And the Valgirans are all gone, but Udius is convinced there's a way to bring him back. So Udius, his boyfriend, uh, Damamo, Epoch, I guess that's it, decide to go into space and find him. Also, there's two Damamus now for some fucking reason. Oh, and an AI shows up. Uh, full disclosure, when I went to watch episode 103... Uh, the website I was using just had 104 in its place, and I didn't notice this till about halfway through, and then when I looked on the wiki to see what happens in 103, I'm like, I don't give a fucking shit, I'm not going back. <laughs> so yeah, maybe 103 is the best episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! ever. Tell me in the comments section below. But yeah, no, so Udius and Squad are supposedly just going through space trying to save their loved ones. But the problem is, is that it, once again, like with everything else with this show, every episode just ends up being this one-off boring space adventure that is not very interesting to look at. Nothing overtly compelling ever really happens. And it's ultimately just not very fun or that interesting. As usual, we do nothing with the idea of aliens. We do nothing with the idea of evil planets or uh, other planets. Uh, everything is just sort of stagnant and done in the most base generic way possible, all while waving the flag of there's creativity here. The thing is, is, is that every episode has like a morsel of plot while ever, while every episode has an overtly long duel and a really shallow setup for why said duel happens. I'm not against an episode with a long or creative duel. And to be fair, some of these are, are kind of fun to watch, but it just sort of feels like you're just struggling to get to the 22 minute mark and you don't know how to do it because you don't really want to put any effort into anything else going on right now. And so it just kind of feels like that's where we're at. Maybe the plot will pick up as we go through it. And this is just another symptom of having to be as fucking long as the show is, but I'm having a lot of trouble believing that. So yeah, um, next we have, let's talk about, let's talk about Epoch for a minute. So, after a whole season of Epoch being in the stupid fucking box and really dragging the whole her coming out of it thing, and to the point where it just lost all emotional significance, Epoch comes out of the box, I think mostly just because we need some sort of like lolly waifu around, so that way she can become Captain Epoch and lead the team through the journey, I guess is what we should call it, as opposed to just lazily hasten together nothingness. And so she's now a captain, even though they're still just doing everything Udius says. And there's just not a lot to it, because like I said, you kind of have wasted it. Like, Epoch should have came out of the box when her arc was complete, when she was willing to admit she was sad for Udius. Instead, they kept up the stupid Sundere crap and kept her in the box, probably just to save on animation, so there's just one less character to animate. She got really annoying. She didn't really do anything. And now I'm supposed to give a shit when she just decides now I'm going to be like captain of space or some shit. No, no, you wasted this crap. It's not interesting. It's not compelling. The only thing I thought could have been fun was, oh, Manabu's going to like take her under her wing and help her out. But no, the two barely do anything together. Most of these episodes had just been everyone just stares at whatever fucking nonsense is going on while just they do nothing. So like, what is even the point? I think the only reason Manabu is here, to my understanding, he's fairly popular in this unpopular show. So I guess like the logic was, well, let's bring him back and include him in this journey so that way maybe we can keep people giving a shit. But 
I don't really know how anyone could find any of this compelling. I guess like the best thing about Epoch is her design is funny. I thought she had black hair, not blue hair, but whatever. Uh, but the whole captain outfit just looks kind of funny to me. Uh, I'm like, I'm a, I'm a girl boss. Take me seriously. I'm like nine, but whatever. Um, I guess next we should talk about the villains, which also lets us talk about Zuijo's return. Uh, so the bad guys are the inhabitants and the soldiers of the dark matter dimension. They are after our heroes for reasons I don't remember if they've said because it's very hard to stay focused on what's going on in this crap. Uh, but yeah, we have four of them and just none of them are interesting or funny or engaging at all. I guess the closest one is Sabuyas, the main one is like okay enough uh in as much as i think it's sort of interesting how he's kind of looking up to zuijo as a powerful leader and wants to be more like that i'm kind of curious about where that could go but like for the most part he's like evil because he likes to be cause people petty and annoying like irritation like making it you he can't go to the bathroom that's not fun or anything uh then we have the second one you've got bruye who is obsessed with making people his new mommy. And I'm just going to say this. Anytime I hear someone say mama or mommy, especially a grown man, it's creepy. And it's not creepy in a way that makes this guy interesting. It's just creepy in a way that makes him annoying. Like, this show has this really dumb idea that character gimmicks replace character personalities and... It's really annoying, especially on the bad guys who are usually the best part of Yu-Gi-Oh! shows. Uh, then we have the cheerleading one, Zayat. I'll say this much. I think it, she is a little bit funny. I think the idea that she's obsessed, that like the way she does the cheers, and I don't know, I just, maybe it was just because by that point I just needed something, but she's entertaining-ish. She's not going to do anything, but like, okay. Oh yeah, there's one who's like shy, so he lives in a ball. Nothing, nothing interesting there. Like these guys are just completely devoid of any personality or any reason to have fun with them at all. Like, I don't know why I'm supposed to care about any of them. Uh, but the one thing I will say, the queen is kind of creatively interesting. Um, I mean, she's physically imposing, so that's kind of cool. I like the way she beats Zuijo. Like, Zuijo is, like, a properly built-up, powerful, intimidating force, and she's just able to toy with him and then just kick his ass. That's always, like, an easy way but an effective way to introduce your new bad guy. The bad guys are the one thing where if there's anything I kind of have hope for to be compelling, just the fact that it is Yu-Gi-Oh! and both Zuijo and uh, Quidel were decent villains, that I could see these guys getting more interesting as you learn what they're about. But just like everything else, it's kind of hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel with these anti-light character things. Uh, okay, anything else? Um, Zuijo had to, like, get curry bread. The, the, the curry bread thing, it's it's not funny. It's annoying. I don't like it. Make it go away. Please, please stop with the curry bread thing. Stop thinking your bad jokes are funny. Oh, yeah, and the last episode we are covering today is 112. Uh, where Damamu gets brain freeze and is going to turn the ship to ice. I've got nothing to say. It was mostly just a time waster. Uh, she turned, they turned into like other characters to remind you those characters exist. There's some attempt at goofy imagery with the second head it doesn't really work because, like, you don't stay on any one joke long enough to really go to places with it. And that's just kind of what I got to say about all this. If you really wanted this to be a funny Yu-Gi-Oh!, you could do that, but it's not funny, and it's not creative, and it's not interesting. And I really just wanted to get this video out of the way because, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh! is supposed to be a franchise I really talk about, but... Honestly, and if you want to know why I was doing so many other anime reviews before, it's because I just enjoy it more. I've really just had more fun talking about shows made by fun, creative people and Jujutsu Kaisen. So I'd rather just talk about that. We'll check in with Yu-Gi-Oh! if you know the plot goes anywhere and it gets compelling. But 
for the most part. I don't think the people working on this show want to be here, and I don't either. So that has been the 12 miserable episodes of Yu-Gi-Oh! Go Rush, or God, I only like nine, but it feels like it. Give me your thoughts about that in the comment section below. And as for the TCG question, so yeah, Battles of Legend is out, and um, Dark Dragon Magicka, or whatever that card is called, it'll be on the screen, is like short printed to all hell and locked behind a QCR. This was a card that was a super rare in Japanese. Uh, do you think this is an okay thing? Because, like, a lot of cards get mega short printed. It's not like this thing is going to be, like, meta relevant. This is just for blue eyes players to cheese shit out. So, my question to you is, do you think this is an okay practice? Do you think it would be okay if it was easier to pull or anything like that? Give me your thoughts about that in the comment section below. And as always, click to like and click to subscribe and join me for more positive anime discussion. There's so much good to talk about and I'd much rather talk about it.